Okay, let me just reshare again. All right. So you can see on my browser right now, this is basically the landing page for you future. Okay. Um, it's very easy to get to this page here. Basically, you just let me just show you how to get to this page. You just type in you future UITM. Okay, so that's on my browser. That's the first on the list. So you just click on it. All right. And then, okay, you'll see here. I mean, you. Uh, if it's your first time, then you can just scroll down and see lah, what it's all about and whatnot. Okay, today I'm not going through all these things. I'm just going to show you the important features of uh, your future. So how do you log in? Okay, normally you would be automatically uh, signed up already because you have registered as a UITM student. Okay, but if you are not, then you can just sign up first. Okay, then only you can log in. So uh, how do you log in here? The button is here. Okay, top right. Okay, so we'll get to this page here. Log in as student lecturer. So, of course, you are a student, so please choose student. Okay, but before that, all right, take note here. Okay, the ones that I highlighted here, routine server maintenance will be conducted from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. daily for your future. Access to the system will not be available during this maintenance period. We apologize for any convenience caused. I know that many of you would like to do your work at night, okay, beyond midnight and whatnot. But please make sure if you need to access to your future, the system might not be available from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Okay, so if let's say you have any assignment to submit via your future, make sure you get it completed before 12 a.m. Okay, or... Uh, if you want to submit, make sure you submit it after 3 a.m. daily. Okay, because otherwise, uh, we are afraid that there could be glitch in the system. Maybe if you have submitted your assignment, let's say at 1 o'clock in the morning, it might not go through the system because during this window here, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. daily, that they're having uh, maintenance of the website. Okay, so log in as student. So you click on student. Okay, so how do you log in? You use your uh, student portal ID. Okay, student ID, you click in your, I mean, you type in your student ID. Uh, let me, I have basically borrowed my brother's account so that I can show you the feature in the student's account because it's slightly different from the lecturer's one. Okay, let me just sign up first. Okay, okay this one, password, you use your student portal password okay so this is how it looks like okay um there there might be similarities with i learned if you're familiar with i learned okay so you you you'll have your dashboard okay look at the left side here okay this is your navigation toolbar Okay, you'll have your dashboard, my courses, my community, SUFO, KIFO settings, SUFO student uh, feedback online. Okay, this is also a platform whereby you can actually do your entrance and exit survey and whatnot. Okay, it would be actually uh, uh, featured here on your future as well. All right, so dashboard, you would have this. Okay, this is, I think, more relevant to your MOOC courses. Okay, as I said just now, I'm not going to touch on MOOC today. Okay, I'm just going to concentrate on uh, your subjects. Uh, should any of your lecturers are using your future, then where do you find your courses? You click on my courses on your navigation toolbar on the left here. So you click on my courses. Okay, so here you will see your courses that you have registered to. Okay, that's why it's very important to register your courses because otherwise it won't be reflected here. Okay, my courses. Okay, so these are the courses that my brother has been registered to. I believe uh, these were his last semester subjects. Okay, so if you are registered to your subjects, then it would be automatically uh, featured here. All right, so if you have, let's say, uh, eight subjects this semester, 
Okay, so uh, probably all those eight would be featured here. Okay, at the top here, we have UITM Academic Calendar. So you can click on it actually. Okay, so you'll see the important dates. Okay, so let's see here. Entrance exit survey. Okay, these are the surveys that you would have to do, right? Okay, so uh, the date would be reflected here. Right? Okay. Um, so that's my courses. I'm going to show you some contents later, but that would have to go through my account later. Let me just show you the basic feature of the student um, account first. Okay, so my courses here is very important. So please make sure you are familiar with this. Okay, then we have my community. For me, this is not um, this is not that important unless like um, that's really like for that particular subject. Um, that's really like uh, students from across UITM or lecturers across UITM who are basically uh, who are basically part of this community. Okay, you can actually join any community groups. Okay, that there, there could be like groups that have been formed. You can join anyone that you like or relevant to you. Okay, so we have SUFO next. Okay, so when the feedback form is available, then uh, I believe that it would be reflected here. All right, so that's about it. Okay, from students uh, feature, let me just log on to my lecturer's account so that I can show you some of the things on my courses that you would also be able to see when your lecturers give you assignments, for example, or um, assessments or uh, materials to watch or materials to study to, to go through before your classes. Okay, so my course is just now, right? Okay, so let's try to click on one. So let's just click on Law 485 Corporate Law. Okay, I show you some feature of my courses. Okay, so it's the same thing that you'll be able to see from your account. All right. So when you click on uh, Law 4 at 5, Corporate Law, one of your subjects, uh, you would be able to see course summary first. Okay, course summary here is basically, as the name suggests, basically, it's everything about the course, okay, that you are uh, taking. All right, we have here. Okay, this is not your lecturer. This is basically your uh, the subject's resource person. Okay, the person who is responsible for the subject across uh, UITM. All right. So for corporate law here, it's one uh, one Salbia here. Okay, this is not your lecturer. I I'll show you how do you know uh, who is your lecturer later. Okay. So under course summary, you'll be able to see some of the things about the course so we have course description here transferable skills and course learning outcomes you can go through all this to know better about your courses okay if you want to know more about your course syllabus okay the details are here under course syllabus so you just click on the course the word course syllabus here okay to expand it so that you'll be able to see the details on the course syllabus Okay, so this is a course syllabus for Law 5 Corporate Law. Okay, we have teaching method. All right, we have also assessment. Okay, I believe that assessments, uh, assessment column here has been updated. Okay, to reflect the COVID-19 uh, assessment plan. All right, the, I mean like uh, for our online classes. So as you can see here, okay, uh, this is true as of today. All right, for Law 485, Corporate Law, okay, we have continuous assessment, 60%, and we have final assessment, 40%.
So um, please take note that uh, since we are having ODL, we are not having any face-to-face -face examination. We are not going to have any uh, exam, uh, any examination in the hall. Okay, so 100% of our uh, assessment would be uh, online. Okay, I mean, when I say online, it depends on the particular subject, it depends on the particular uh, lectures as well. Okay, so for law with five year continuous assessment, 60%. Okay, it's uh, broken up into assignment 20%, quiz 20%, test 20%. So this would be different depending on the courses that you are taking. So please have a look at this course summary here. Okay, to get to know more about the assessment plan. And on top of this, you can also uh, confirm with your respective lecturers. Lah. Okay. And then for final assessment, we have 40%. Okay, there could be changes in some of the subjects. So uh, you need, of course, I said just now, you need to reconfirm this with your lecturers. Okay, from time to time. Okay, here we also have reading lists. Okay, what are the reading lists uh, that you can actually have to know more about the subject? Of course, this is uh, not exhaustive. Lah. Okay, you could actually refer to any other books that you come across that is related to uh, your subject. Right? Okay, so that's core summary. Okay, we also have uh, some... Uh, uh, let me just show you. Okay, since I've... Since I've... Uh, Click on Law for it, five Corporate Law just now. How do you know to which group do you belong to? Okay, to know about that, okay, you have registered for the causes. When you have registered for the causes, you also have to be registered to a group. Okay, so you click on the group tab here. Okay, so I have many groups here because these were the groups that I taught last semester. But of course, on your interface, you would only see one group. Okay, the group that you belong to for your particular subject. Okay, so you just click on your group name here. Okay, there would be a further drop down list here. Okay, we have announcement. So this is where you could see the announcements made by your lecturers. Let's see. Yeah. Click on announcement. Okay, this is an example of an announcement that I made to my students last semester. All right. Okay, so you'll be able to see this announcement on your interface as well. All right, so that's where you see your lecturer's announcement. Okay, what else do we have? We have group content. Okay, so click on group content, click on the folder. Then here is where you could see all the documents that your lecturers have sent out to you. All right. Um, so basically, you can see here my files are MP4 files, and at the bottom I have PDF files. Okay, the MP4 files are basically the recorded lectures. Okay, why are there so many files? Because uh, all these files are short files. Okay, like uh, ten to fifteen minutes recorded lecture files, so that uh, when you look at it, you can actually. Uh, I mean, it won't take much of your time. Lah. You can actually go to uh, the first topic, then you might want to do something else first, and then you continue with the next one. Okay, so it'll be easier for you to actually um, go through the materials that your lecturers are sharing with you. Okay, uh, PDF files here are basically my slides. Okay, so you can access, you can have access to all these documents on the group content tab all right okay so next is i discuss what exactly is i discuss i discuss here is a forum platform okay so i have here lecture q and a okay so you click on this okay let me just choose another class because I did tutorials here on iDiscuss. Okay. So your lecturers might be posting questions for you to discuss on this platform. So for example, here, meetings and winding up. You click on the topic. 
Okay, here I have the question. Okay, then you guys can discuss on the topics. Of course, uh, it depends on the particular lecture. Lah. Okay, whether or not they would be using this platform for your tutorials or some other platforms. Okay, right. What else do we have? Okay, how do you know who's your lecturer? Especially the first time. Okay, so you click on members, members of the group. Okay, when you click on members of the group, this is what you would be able to see. Okay, so instructors here are the names of your lecturers. Okay, if you have a, a different lecturer than your tutor, uh, different from your tutor, then you have two names here. Like for this particular class that I click here, um, we have, I was like in charge with its lecture. So my name, my name is there. Okay, and they have basically a different tutor for their tutorial. So that's why there are two lecturers names here. Okay, but if you have the same lecturer as your lecture, lecturer who's handling your lecture and tutor who's handling your tutorial, then you would just have one lecturer's name reflected here. Okay, and here we have the list of students. So this is where you would be able to see who else is in your class especially right now we can't have face-to-face -face classes sometimes you're clueless as to who else is your classmates so this is where you would be able to see especially if your lecturers give you um what do i call uh, group work okay group assignments okay so this is where you would be able to to see if you were to form a group who else you would actually be able to ask to join your group Okay, if you have not, uh, if you don't have any group yet. Okay. Okay, so there are 30 students in this particular class that I've clicked on. Okay, so make sure you look at the whole thing. Okay, with the previous and next pattern. All right, but make sure a very important thing Okay, because you can see here that's 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 also an announcement tab. All right, that's also an announcement tab. Okay, this is not from your lecturer. Okay, this is basically from across your ITM. Okay, those who are taking law for it, five corporate law, for example. Okay, if they make an announcement here on this tab, all right. It could be seen by everyone who's taking corporate law, law 485 here. Okay, but for your respective uh, lecturer's announcements, okay, make sure you click on the group tab first and then you click on your group. Then you can see when it expands. Okay, this tab here, announcement, this is from your lecturer for your respective group only. Okay, announcement on the top is basically for those who are taking uh, the subject across Malaysia, across your ITM. Okay, but announcement solely for your group can be found here under the group tab. Okay, announcement. That's the difference. Same goes to course content here. Okay, so when I click course content here, okay, you can see here. These files are not by me. These files are by Salmiya Binti Saleh, another lecturer from another campus. Okay, but this is uh, able to be viewed by everyone who's taking Law 45 Corporate Law. Okay, but this is not meant for your class only. Okay, but materials from your lecturers, okay, if they share it on group content just now it's only for your class to see that's the difference okay at the top here it's meant for everybody across your itm who's taking the same subject all right but for your respective group please make sure you click on the group tab first then you go from there all right okay so another important feature is continuous assessment okay
All right. Okay. So this is another important feature that I would like to show you. Okay, continuous assessment. All right. So some lecturers might be using uh, this feature here to give you assessments or assignments. Okay. So you'll be able to see this. Okay, let's say I would like to give you an assessment, like a quiz. So click on assessment. Okay. So you'll be able to see that it would be reflected on the list of assessments that you have here. Okay, then you can just, of course, my feature here is quite different because this is a lecturer's feature, but uh, on your feature, in on your interface, it would be, uh, there would be a button where you can click so that you can do the quiz, for example. Okay, but it would be reflected on the assessment if your lecturers are using your future to give you assessments. Okay, if you're more, uh, if you're familiar with Google Classroom, it's almost the same. It's along the same line. Okay, on top of assessment, we also have assignment. Okay, assignment, the same thing. When your lecturer gives you assignment, okay, then it would be reflected here. Right, you'll be able to view the assignment and you'll be able to do it. All right, so that's another important feature. Okay, so I believe that's it, but let me just go back to my brother's account just now, the student's account, so that you can see from the student's uh, interface when it comes to assignment and assessment. Okay, so we are back to the student's account. So as I said just now, click on my courses. Okay, let's pick one subject here. View. Okay, the same thing. As you can see on my interface, the same thing here that you could see from a student's account once you click on the subject on the course okay it would bring you to the course summary okay you can see the course summary okay this was the group that he was that my brother was registered to so it will be ref reflected on your uh, interface as well okay so you can see here the tabs are the same okay we have announcement where uh, people or, or instructors across uitm yang satu malaysia ni Okay, lecturers from the whole of UITM, not just from Shah Alam, could be making announcements here for the benefit of um, everyone who's taking the subject. Okay, uh, this course content as well is for everyone who's taking the subject across UITM. Okay, okay, this is the one that I mentioned just now, continuous assessment. Okay, assessment you can only find here. You cannot find assessment under the group tab. Okay, so for assessment, you can just click on continuous assessment. Okay, so this is how it would look like for an assessment. So we have title, when should you start, when can you start doing it, uh, when is the due date, and here, okay, what is your status? Okay, have you done it, have you not done it? All right, have you submitted, have you not submitted? Okay, it would be reflected here. Okay, there would be a button where you can press to start doing your, uh, not button lah, let's say, uh, I think like it would be uh, your title here. The title of the assessment can be click, okay, and then you can do the assessment from there, right? So that's for assessment, for assignment, the same thing lah. Okay, if your lecturer has given you any assignment, it would be reflected here. We have the same thing, title, start, and, okay, marks here. If your lecturer enable this feature, you would be able to see how much do you get if, let's say, your lecturer marks it online, okay? Whether you have completed the assignment or not, okay? And what's the status? Submitted, marked, unmarked, and so on, okay? It would be all reflected on the continuous assessment tab, okay? But you would have to confirm with your lecturer whether your lecturer is giving it as an assessment 
or assignment. Okay. Okay, so we have, okay, this is the important tab that I showed you just now, the group tab. Okay. So as I said just now, you would only be able to see the group that you are registered to. So you click on the name of your group, then it would expand. You would be able to see all these things. So announcement. Sorry, it's taking a while to download. Okay, I can see somebody posting a question, but let me just address the question later. Okay, so this is an example of an announcement made by uh, the lecturer for this particular topic, for that particular class. Okay, so for your class, okay, you would be able to see your lecturer giving you announcements here under your group tab. Okay, then we have group content. So this is where you would be able to see whatever contents, whatever materials for lectures or tutorials that your lecturers might be sharing with you. Okay, you don't have any for the subject here. Okay, but if your lecturers have shared with you, then you'll be able to see it here. Okay, this is the feature, the forum platform just now I discussed. Okay, the same thing. Okay, if your lecturers have started any topic, then you'll be able to discuss the topic here. I discuss. Then last but not least, members just now, where you would be able to see who's your lecturer and who are your classmates. Okay. So I believe that's it. Okay. Uh, every time that, uh, let's say you want to go to your other subjects, right? Now you are at building design. You want to go to other subjects. So how do you go back? You just click the home button. Okay, at the top left here, it bring us back to the My Courses tab just now. So you just click on another subject. Okay, so the same thing okay, for all the subjects that you are registered to. Okay, so uh, that's uh, all the features uh, that I want to show you when it comes to you future. I'll just stop sharing now and I'll attend to the questions that you have in the chat box here. Okay. From Balkis Binti Muhammad Amin. Can we log in to these subjects as students? Okay, as I said, as I've said just now, okay, once you have registered your courses, like Dr. No Arzlina has uh, has mentioned yesterday, uh the faculty would uh, register for you the four subjects. Okay, of course, for the remaining subjects, you would have to register yourselves. So these subjects that you are registered to by right would be reflected on your My Courses tab. Okay, so then you can already uh, view the subjects. Can we look in? Okay. Next question is from Nur Fatin Akila Ahmad Fairuz. Assalamualaikum, Madam. What is the difference between I learn at Student Portal and U Future is the U Future is more advanced than I learn, Madam. Okay, as I've said earlier, okay, we have right now we have both I learn and U Future, but U Future is basically the latest version of uh, our online uh, platform lah for UITM. Why is it so? Because what's the difference? U Future has the MOOC. MOOC, if you are familiar to that massive open online uh, courses, it has that feature. Okay, the feature that I don't touch with you today, lah. Okay, because uh, the scope for today's session is only meant for your uh, online classes uh, for the rest of the semester. Okay, so that's the difference. That's why now they are slowly migrating to you future, but 
uh, if you have logged on to iLearn, you might notice that the features uh, are almost the same as iLearn. Okay, so that's how they are different. Okay, it's the latest version. So when you say that, when you ask whether it's a more it's more advanced than iLearn, I would say yes lah. Okay, it's, it's the latest version. And as, as I've mentioned as well just now, uh, sooner or later, uh, UITM will phase out the usage of iLearn. Okay. Okay, next question from Muhammad Faris. Morning, madam. I have a question. Since the U Future features and contents are very similar to iLearn or iClass, do we still need to access the iLearn or fully utilize the U Future? Okay. This question here, the answer is it depends on your lecturer. Okay, so if your lecturer says, uh, let's use iLearn or iClass, okay, then you use iClass or iLearn for that particular subject. But if your lecturer uses UFuture, then you would have to use UFuture. Okay, it is not like assimilated. Let's say your, your lecturer says, uh, we are going to use UFuture for this particular subject. But if you go to iClass or iLearn, you won't be able to see whatever materials that your lecturers are sharing on your future. They are not integrated. They are two different platforms. Okay, that's why uh, sooner or later, iLearn or iClass would be phased out. Okay, so it depends on that particular subject. But as much as your SU4 is concerned, I think you could do uh, the, the feedback on any of these platforms, okay, either on Island or iClass or UFuture. It would be accessible via both platforms, okay, but when it comes to your subjects, you would have to uh, ask your respective lecturers which one they are using, okay, if they are using, lah. okay, they might also use some other platforms like Google Classroom, okay, and so on, okay. From Ahmad Arshad, what are the differences between Island and U Future? Uh, I've I've answered this question just now. Yeah, hope you. Uh, uh, I mean, hope this question being answered. I mean, hope you understand just now. Okay, Nurul Batrisha Zaini Ariza, can we know our class timetable through U Future? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think there's a feature. Uh, showing your class timetable on your future okay okay so i've addressed all the questions any more questions on your future you can try to log into uh, not yet lah wait until you have registered for all your courses then you can try to log on to your you future account okay so, um, any more questions? No question? Where can we access our timetable? Dr. Ina, uh, a question from Hilmi Zawawi. Timetable, uh, okay. Hi, Zawawi. Uh. Right, your timetable will be posting your timetable uh, through Telegram. Right, all of the information on your timetable, your classes, your lectures will be posted on, uh, on, on in the Telegram. All right. Um, yesterday, as to the question whether you need to register uh, COCO, uh, third language, and also ELC, so the answer is yes. Uh, as I said yesterday, the faculty will only be uh, registering your core subject, which is contract, uh, contract one, touch one, MLS, and also quantity one. But for your third language, your co curriculum, and your CL, uh, ELC and CTU, uh, that one you have to register yourself. Right? All right. right. Thank you, Dr. Ina. So I hope you're clear on that. So uh, please wait for the pemakluman, okay, from uh, on your Telegram group, okay? Uh, on your future, you won't be able to see your timetable, 
unfortunately, but you probably you may propose that it could be inserted so that you can view your timetable from your U future account. Okay, because uh, I'm I'm not sure. You, I think U future hasn't been launched. Okay, they wanted to launch it uh, earlier. Okay, but because of the pandemic situation, I think like everything was put on hold. All right. Any more question? We still have five more minutes. If you have any question. Okay. Uh, can we start register for the third language and Coco now? From Izati, Islin, Dr. Ina? Yes. Registration starts on the 30th of September. Okay. Thank oh, no, no. Me. I think the third language and ELC, they have postponed the registrations until Tuesday, 6th of October. So please check on 6th of October, yeah? Okay. Right. All right. Okay, uh, Izati, registration for third language and POCO starts on 6th of October. So from Nashita Zafira, so if we register the elective courses like COCO and third language, there will be any clash, any clash on the schedule? I believe no. No, no uh, because, we have arranged, uh, uh, yeah, because we have arranged um, all of the COCO, ELC and all that um, spec on specific time, which does not clashes with your core subject. Okay. Right, but please check. All right. Uh, from Hilmi Zawawi, how about credit exemption? Sorry, credit exemption, you have to you you have to fill in forms yesterday. Um, the form can be downloaded from the website. It's a pengecualian credit form, and then you have to attach that together with your syllabus and your transcript, and then you have to send to the office. Or you can email to me because it's COVID, so you are not allowed to come to the faculty. Please email to me and to Puan Rusnina, our AR academic, yesterday. Right? Okay. Uh, you can always get my email uh, through Telegram. I'll post my email. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll post again my email here. <laughs> okay, thank you. In the Dr. chat Ina. box, yeah? Dr. Ina, I think like there are so many other questions for you here. Let me just read out the questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my slot then. Uh, okay, okay, sure. Uh, okay, from Muhammad Amin bin Muhammad Akhib, on the website, it states that ELC groups are already full. Is it an error? No, that's why you have to wait until 6 because they are restructuring the classes. So it's mm -hmm. uh, only on 6 that you can be sure okay. if, if there are any, any other classes. But it should be uh, the way they have arranged the classes. It can fit all of you in. 300 will open up for 300 students. Okay, so not yet, yeah. 6 October, please check again. From yeah. Ahmad Arshad, what is APB exemption? APB exemptions? ELC? Do you mean ELC? If previously uh, you were a, a diploma graduate from UITM, so there are certain subjects of ELC that you have taken uh, during your diploma. So you can submit that one for exemption, if that's what you mean. Uh. Well, is there any other APB courses? Uh, third language, but third we don't language. usually allow for third language. It's a different syllabus, totally different syllabus from what you have done in your diploma and the one that you are going to do in your degree. It depends, yeah. Um, the pengecualian credit, um, it has to be at least 70% um, similar to the courses that you have done earlier, to the courses that you are going to, you are going to sit in your degree. If it's less than 70%, then pengecualian credit will not uh, be allowed for you. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Ina, and, uh, this is a follow-up question from Hilmi Zawawi just now regarding, I think, right, the yeah. function. Is it all the four form, doctor? Four forms? Where uh, do you get the, the four forms? Hmm? It's two forms. It's one form, but in two copies. Hmm. Where do you find the four forms? It should be only one form, right? Um, usually, the manual form is pink in color, but I'm not sure online, macam mana dia punya color. <laughs> but it's pink in color. Okay, Hilmi, I hope you take note. 
Okay, mm. from Nur Nadira, Assalamualaikum. Yesterday, a lot of students had already registered for their third language and it was already listed on right. different courses. So does that mean those who had registered yesterday don't have to register it again on 6th of October? Please check again on 6th of October, whether it is recorded, the one that you have registered, whether it sticks in your registration list. Please check on 6th of October. Okay, so please check again, yeah. Uh, I'll just post again Dr. Nur Azlina and uh, Puan Rusnina's emails here. Hold on. Please take note of these emails. Should you have anything, any inquiries whatsoever, please email them. Okay. Next question from Muhammad Faris. Since we are talking about course registration, do I need to submit the credit exemption form, although in the list of courses to be registered has uh, reducted the subject for me or has reduced or has deducted? I think deducted. Deducted. You just submit uh, in case we need to uh, to have the records of why uh, one of the subjects being uh, exempted from you. Okay. Please do the submission. Uh, please do the submission so that we will have one record for that. Okay. All right. Take note, Faris. Ahmad Arshad said, I think this is still re uh, related to credit exemption. There are three forms. Mm. That's what he said. Three form. let me check with the uh, office on Monday and then I'll update you in the telegram. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ina. From Aisha Masrur. So for post-foundation students, are we not allowed to exam a particular subject? Post-foundation? Meaning you are from Asasi, you are from Asasi Law. Or after Asasi, you have taken your diploma and then you enroll into degree of law. Uh, I'm not sure what, what the post um, foundation. Okay, whether this refers to Asasi or not, is it? Uh, whether you are freshly from foundation or you after foundation, you have taken your diploma. Now you are enrolling yourself in the degree level or what do you mean by post foundation? All of your post foundation, I believe. Okay, uh, maybe Aisha Masrur can update. I mean, can I explain more about this? Okay, I'll get to you. Uh, I see your message from Nurhana Nurham Surudin. Salam, how do we know the subjects that we are eligible to apply for credit exemption? The usual courses that can apply for credit exemptions I've listed in my slides yesterday. It's only as a UITM diploma student have taken um, the subject Wajib University, uh, ELC, Bahasa, Bahasa Inggris, also your CTU, and some of okay. the COCO. Uh, that's, that's the only subject that we usually allow for credit exemption. All right. Okay, uh, from Aisha Masro just now, she just updated here. Just finish Asasi and into degree right away. Uh, no subject exemptions for SSE. Even though you have taken your contract, it's not in depth. So the syllabus is not, it's less 70% similar to what you are learning in your degree level. Okay. Exemption is normally for diploma, ex-diploma diploma, students, yes. right? Correct. Okay. Uh, I think last question from Hilmi. What's the difference between APB form and the faculty form? Uh, I'm not sure. I've not analyzed both forms. But I perhaps I guess you need to submit both. APB and the faculty, you have to submit to APB first. All right. Uh, anyhow, I'll brief you again in the telegram, um, the pengecualian credit, credit exemptions procedures. Yeah? Okay. Hope you take note, Hilmi. Uh, another question. Where can I get the slides shown from yesterday? So the slides shown from yesterday session was uh, Mr. Yunus' slides, right? So um, let's, oh, let's ask to my slides. Uh, uh, yeah, which are slides? Are you referring to my slides? Gary? It seems that there, that there are lots of questions from my slides. Are you referring to my slides or Mr. Yunus' slides? Yes, yes. to... Uh, yes, what, Gary? Which slides, Gary? Was it my slides or Encik Yunus slides? Was it the Zoom session? Or the morning session? Uh, the morning session. So my slides and Panina slides. Okay. We'll be posting that uh, 
on websites and in the Telegram as well. We have compiled uh, some videos for you to, to watch and, and we'll be posting that again in the Telegram and, and also on the website. Yes, on yeah. the website, yeah. starting next week, inshallah. Okay. Yeah, Ponsara, thank you. Nurul Batrisha Zaini Ariza, since we have to register ELC and CTU on our own, does that mean that we can choose our own class or group for CTU and ELC? I think yeah, answer. as long as that, that suits to your timetable. It does not clash with any of your course subject. Okay, so you, you, you need to see lah whether it clashes with your course subjects or not. By right, it shouldn't lah. Mm. Okay, depending on the groups as well, right, uh, Dr. Ina? Yes. You would have to look at the groups. Any more questions? Or was that the last question? I think no more question. Lah. Okay. So uh, before we end the session, let me just uh, remind you again that on Monday, we're going to have another session on Google Apps. All right. So please don't be late. Okay, please don't make your other friends wait for you. Uh, okay, please be punctual. Uh, the session would start uh, just like today at 10. So hopefully we can start on time on Monday. Okay, it's just going to be a quick session, but please be there uh, on time. All right. So uh, if there's no more question, I thank all of you for being here today. All right. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Oh, sorry, let's close our session with Tasbih Kifara and Surah al -As. All right, that's all. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.